what God has for me, it is. You can copy it all you want to, but you're going to be a cheap imitation because you can't beat me. You can't do it like he gave it to me to do. And I can't do it like he gave it to you to do. Why can't I appreciate how he's rewarded you openly and shout and rejoice with you so when he do it for me, we rejoice together. So in Matthew chapter 6, they say that all that in that text, all that is right there in chapter 6. It just depends on how you read it. So also in chapter 6, he's teaching them how to pray. They don't know how to pray. They ask him how to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because he said, I need you to understand something about the kingdom. The kingdom always puts God first. Now they're struggling because now he said, now after y'all teach you how to pray, I got to teach you how to fast. I don't want you to be like the hypocrites. I don't want you to go around showing people like you're fast. And I don't want them to even notice you fasting. He said, when you fast, I need you to anoint yourself and wash your face. Don't you even look like what you're going through. And too many times we, we have a tendency to look like what we're going through. But I'm telling somebody today, you need to anoint yourself. You need to wash yourself. You need to get up in the glory of God and say, God, I'm not going to walk like that no more. I'm not going to be like this anymore. I'm about to let the glory of God shine on me. So, so we get here because he's teaching, he's teaching them, and he's trying to get them to understand that there's something different now when you come into the kingdom. So when we get here to verse 24, First thing I need you to do is, you need to make up your mind what you go serve. That's what he says, no man can serve two masters. He'll either love one or he'll hate the other. He said, no man can serve God and mammon at the same time. You can't serve God and you can't serve money. Can I, can I give you a SOS real quick? Can I tell you that money is supposed to serve you? Money is supposed to be a resource tool in your hand to take care of kingdom business and your business. But when you're serving money, all your mind is on is your how you go get more of it, how you go make more of it. You ain't thinking about God. The only time you think about God is when the deal go through. Thank you, Jesus. But God said, no, put me in the middle of the deal. And sometimes, too many times, we are serving the wrong master. And that's why you got to be careful that when God bless you, you don't serve the blessed thing he gave you, but you still keep serving him. Because in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it can all be taken away. But one thing that can't be taken away is your relationship with him. <laughs> and so God says, so he tells, he tells him, he says now in verse 25, he said, if you understand what I'm telling you, watch what he says in verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you go eat. Don't worry about what you go drink. Don't worry about your body. Don't worry about what you go put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Can I help somebody? Change your focus. Now, wait a minute, God. I need clothing. I need something to eat. I need something to drink. What do you mean? Don't worry about it. Well, if you get verse 24, it's easy to get verse 25. Because if in verse 24, you learn that you need to serve him, then you understand what he's saying here in verse 25. It becomes easier because he starts to tell you, I am the one that's going to take care of getting you the clothes, getting you the food, getting you the drink. But if you serve money, then money has to be your God. So look what he says here. You got you to gotta change your focus because this is what I need you to understand. If God created you, God knows how to take care of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds that sound real deep, doesn't it? But it's simple. If he took care of you, if he created you, he knows all about you. The Bible says he knows the very hairs that are numbered on your head. So, so when you combing out your hair and you just throwing that away, God has numbered every follicle that you just threw in the trash. Every follicle that you crying about that's gone that you don't think go come back. God says, I know everything about you. And so, and so you have to change your focus 
from the natural things to the things of the spirit. Okay, why do you say that, Pastor Will? Watch this. Verse 26, he tells you why. He said, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. They don't get no tithes, nor do they reap. They're not collecting no money, nor do they gather in barns. They're not building storehouses. He said, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more better than they? If you go get this kingdom benefit, I need you to make some observations. One thing I know about birds, I've never seen a bird die of starvation. I've never seen a bird in a grocery store. I've never seen a bird in line at the bank. I've never seen a bird say we're getting evicted. Because birds depend on God. Out of nowhere, worms show up for the bird. <laughs> out of nowhere, somebody start throwing bread out there for the birds. And birds understand that if we go survive, it's only because of the God, our creator. And Jesus says, I need you to observe these birds. <laughs> they don't sow nothing. They don't reap nothing. They not put nothing up for starch. But some kind of way, they survive it. Some kind of way, they reproduce it. They got baby birds that they teach in the same way. But because they trust God, that's why he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Because the bird knows how to trust God. And, and if you go get this benefit, sometimes you just need to look at nature. See, see, I have a bird. I have a bird. And I don't even know if my wife realizes that we have a bird. Yeah, we have a bird. On Sunday mornings, I kid you not, on Sunday morning, about somewhere between 6 and 6.15, there's a bird every Sunday morning, as long as it's not raining, that sits outside my window. <laughs> And for a minute, I just thought it was a coincidence. But then I started noticing he's there every Sunday. I don't even know if he's parked on top of my roof. I don't know if he's part of, um, on top of a tree. I don't know where he is. But I know he's right there by my back bedroom window. And all I hear is, <laughs> it almost becomes my alarm clock. I don't need my Apple phone as much as I need that bird. Because that bird signifies to me, Will, it's time for you to get up. And it makes just the prettiest little sound. And after about five minutes, it stops and it goes away. And so I make observations with birds sometimes and say, God, are you trying to teach me something? Are you trying to teach me how to recognize your voice through recognizing the voice of, the voice of a bird? Are you trying to show me how good you are and how much you're concerned about even getting me up on a Sunday morning that you will send a bird over to my house to start whistling outside of my window? Okay, okay, I got some deep folk up in here, Brother Will, you crazy. No, I'm not. It's just like the prophet Elijah who was laying by the brook Cherub and, the, and God said, I'm going to send a bird to feed you, Elijah. And the bird go bring you meat and he go keep bringing you meat until I release the famine. Tell somebody, God will use a bird. He'll use a whole bird to teach you a whole lesson. And if you can catch the lesson, you can see God in the middle of the lesson. So watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. So, so if you go make this observation, I need you to understand something. I need you to know your worth. Why do you say that? Because the end part of that verse 26, he said, are you not much better than the bird? See, see, some of us, some of us have been beat down so bad by people. We've been beat down so bad by family members. We've been beat down so bad by people that were close to us that even though we saved, we don't think we all of that in a bag of chips. Even though we saved, we don't think God really want to use us. Even though we saved, we don't really see ourselves as God sees us. Can I tell you something? You have value on your life. 
The psalmist says, what is man that thou art mindful of him, that thou hast set a crown of thorns around his head, that thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. The Bible says you are wonderfully and you have been fearfully made by God. I don't care who don't like you. I don't care who talking about you. God told me to tell you tonight, you need to know your worth. You need to know you're a child of God. You need to know you washed in the blood. You need to know you're the head and not the tail. You need to know that you're above only and never beneath. You need to know that you're a virtuous woman. You need to know that you're a mighty man of valor. Tell somebody, you got to know your worth. You got to know your worth. And when your past starts showing up, uh, trying to remind you, you ain't all of that. Uh, tell your past, my past is behind me. And God has made me into a new man. And this new man is now walking in newness of life. And now God is doing something great in my life. But I got to put a value on my life. I, got, I can't let other people devalue me no more. That's what they used to do. But I, I can't let them devalue me no more. I don't care if don't nobody speak to me. I don't care if don't nobody hang out with me. I don't care if don't nobody call me. I know who I am. You got to know who you are in God. And God will mess around and send you the right type of people. So you don't have to be desperate for people. That you start talking to people and hanging with people that you really don't want to hang with. Why? Because you don't appreciate your value. But can I tell somebody something? You an asset and not a liability. What do you mean, Pastor Will? Assets have a way of appreciating in value. So God says, even though I brought you in here, I'm taking you a little higher. You don't have to be with me now, but you go wish you been with me when I get a little bit later because of where he's taking me to, because he's adding value to my life. He said, are you not better? Are you not better than they? Watch this, watch this, y'all. He says, verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto your stature? Can I help somebody? You can't change it. You can't change what people think about you. You can't change nothing about your natural life. I don't care if you want to be taller. I don't care if you want to be have longer hair. I don't care if you want your eyes to be brown instead of dark brown. You can't change it. You can stand in a mirror all day. You can look in that mirror and you can talk about, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. But you can't, if you don't start getting on a treadmill, if you don't start eating differently, you not go lose no weight. He said, which man by worrying can add a stat a cubit to his stature? He said, you worried about the wrong thing. This is not about you. This is about the God that's in you. He said, he said, I need you to understand something because I need to, I need to drop this on you. The reason that you worry, the enemy uses worry against the believer is because worry cancels out faith. Yeah. Worry, the enemy knows that if he can get you to worry, he now fights you and lives in your mind. And he's fighting for your mind. That's why the enemy is fighting you. He's fighting you for your mind. And that's why sometimes you can go to sleep at night and you wake up in the morning and you're still tired because you don't know how to find rest in God. Because there's too much stuff going on in your mind. And that's why Paul says it's with the mind that I serve the law of God. And Satan is fighting you in your mind. And that's why you got to tell the devil, I've been given a new mind. I got the mind of Christ living down on the inside of me. And I'm not go vacillate between faith and doubt. Faith one minute, doubt the next minute. Faith this minute, worry the next minute. If God told me I can have it, I'm just going to believe that I can have it. If he told me that if I speak to the mountain, then the mountain got to move, then I'm going to believe that the mountain is the mountain is moving. What are you telling me, Pastor Will? Sometimes when you pray, things don't move as fast as you want them to. But that don't mean that they're not moving. And this is what Jesus is saying. By worrying, you can't change one cubit. Let God do the changing. Let God do the fighting. Let God do the blessing. Let God do the favoring. Let God be the one that take care of you. Don't you worry about how it's going to get done. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So he says, so he says in verse 28, this right here blessed me. This blessed me right here. He said, and why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither 
do they spend? And yet I say to you, Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, this is what got me. My wife, she really doesn't like flowers, like talking about. Um, so as a man, that's what we're taught. By your woman, some flowers. So my wife made a birthday. So I sent her birthday age in red roses to her job by a carrier and had a couple of packages that was there. So me, as a man, I'm feeling all happy. I'm waiting on my phone call. Because y'all, these was a lot of roses. This wasn't a dozen. This wasn't two dozen. This wasn't three dozen. This was a lot of roses. I didn't tell how old you was, Maria. Hold up. I, I ain't tell him. I ain't tell him. I just said it was three dozen, so you, you could be 36. So when she called me, she said, who brought these funeral flowers over here? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Girl, do you know how much the funeral flowers cost? She said, baby, I appreciate the gesture, but I don't like flowers because they die. Isn't that the point? But one day, my sister-in-law came by the house. And my sister-in-law had some lilies. And I saw how my wife reacted to the lilies. She said, ooh, the lilies smell so good. Ooh, they blossom. They last so much longer. So guess what I started buying? And now I get a different reaction from buying the lily than when I bought the rose because I found something out about a lily. A lily lives a lot longer than a rose. Watch this. When you give it a lot of water and when you expose it to the sun. But if you don't give it water, a lily will die. But what I realize is that when a lily is about to die, if you still stick it in some water, it's going to spring up. And so God says, I want you to consider the lilies because you are a lily in my field because I'm the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. And I will give you enough water in order for you to survive. I'll give you enough sunlight in order for you to live. He says, Solomon, in all of his splendor, was not arrayed like one of these. Watch this. Because Solomon didn't depend on me like this lily. God said, I need my people to depend on me like a lily. It neither toils nor it spins. It's not worried about water. It's not worried about the sun. But the lily is dependent on me to give it water, to give it sunlight. He said the lily is going to grow and blossom because the lily is planted and is dependent on me. Tell somebody, you got to be like a lily. You got to be like a lily. You got to trust God. But what are you telling me, Pastor Will? There's some stuff you don't have to work for. The lily doesn't spin. The lily doesn't toil. The lily don't ask for nothing. The lily stand there planted by the rivers of living water, knowing that its leaf shall not wither, knowing that it shall bring forth fruit in its due season. And I'm talking to some people. God has planted you to be a lily in his kingdom. He said, and I'm going to give you everything that you need. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. I promise you I'm going to get out of your way. Watch this, y'all. Because if you don't have to work for it, if you don't have to work for it, I need you to understand that God's going to make a guarantee to you. What do you mean? Right here in verse 30, he says, Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, 
which to this day is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not more clothe you? Can I tell somebody something? The reason you don't have to worry about what you go eat, the reason that you don't have to worry about what you go wear, the reason that you don't have to worry about what you go drink, because God is going to supply it. God is going to meet the need. God is going to give you exactly what you need when you need it. Just when you think the meal is running low in the barrel, just when you think the oil is running low in your lamp, God knows how to bring a supernatural flow. And sometimes we gotta we forget that God is still a supernatural God, that God knows how to supernaturally do something things in your life he's still a miracle worker he's still a way maker he's still a provider and God says you don't have to work for this I'm about to guarantee you because you trusted me like this lily because you're not being concerned overly about how things are going in your life but you trust me to clothe you watch this watch this watch this so he said take no thought for what you go wear take no thought for what you go eat Take no thought for what you go drink. Why does he keep saying this? He's saying this all through verse 25 all the way down. Because he wants you to trust him. Can I help somebody with something? Don't let anxiety overwhelm you. That's why Paul said, be anxious for nothing. But through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And he will give you the peace that pass all understanding. In this season of your life, you can't get overly anxious for nothing. You can't afford to make the wrong move in this season of your life. Because God says, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of whatever the need is. I'm going to take care of the healing. I'm going to take care of the calamity in your home. I'm going to take care of the indifference in your paycheck. God says, I'm going to be the difference. I'm going to make up the gap in your life. I'm going to be the one that make up the difference in your life. But I need you not to worry in this season. Don't you fret. Don't you turn your back on me. But I need you to be planted. And I need you to stay right where I have you. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to get on up out of here. Because the Bible says right here that your heavenly father already knows what you have need of. That's why it's important. For you to just talk to your daddy. All God wants you to do is just talk to him. All God wants you to do is just live for him. He said, I already know what the need is. I know what you have need of even before you ask. That's what the scripture says. But God says, I want you to ask anyway. And that's why the Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us and grant us our petitions. I dare you to talk to God like you know it's already met. Don't talk to God like you need it, man. Talk to God like it's already met. God, I thank you that every bill is paid. God, I thank you that all my debts are paid. God, I thank you that me and my spouse are on one accord. God, I thank you that my body is healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. God, I thank you that you're about to make my enemies my footstool. God, I thank you that you anointed my head with oil. And God, I thank you that my cup is running over. So he says, because I have need, I know what you have need of. This is what I need you to do. I need you to seek me first. Seek first my kingdom. Seek first my righteousness. And all these things go be added unto you. What things all the clothes? What things all the food? What things all the drink? God said, everything you need, when you seek me and not money, when you seek me and not things, when you seek me and not the applause and the opinions of people, when you seek me, all these things shall be added unto you and God says the reason that I need you to understand this is because I'm a God that want to bless you and I come to declare over somebody tonight that God wants to bless you I don't know what the enemy has been holding up from you I don't know what the enemy has told you is not going to happen from you I don't know if there's a promotion that they're trying to hinder you from I don't know if there's something that's being held up some kind of lawsuit but I'm here to tell you God's about to add it. He's about to add it to you. He's about to give it to you. And in this season, it's coming back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. And running over. For all the hell you've been going through. 
God says, I'm about to give you double for your trouble. And I don't know who you are, but expect your double. I don't know who you are. Expect it to be added unto you. I don't know who you are. Expect whatever it is you've been believing for to change. I don't know who you are, but he said, if you seek me first, I'm going to add it to you. Verse 34, ushers, come on, take your place. Verse 34, he says, watch this. And I promise you, this is it. He said, take no thought for tomorrow. Because tomorrow got problems of its own. And some of us wake up or go to bed dreading tomorrow. Because you already know what you've been dealing with. But God told me to tell you, he's the God of your tomorrow. And God told me to tell you, he will meet you in your tomorrow. And the reason you don't have to worry about tomorrow is because God is going to be there. The reason that you don't have to worry about tomorrow is because God's going to fight the battle that you can't fight. The reason you don't have to worry about tomorrow because God is going to go before you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the God of your tomorrow. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You don't have to doubt. All you need to do is to trust God and lean not to your own understanding. And in all your way, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for your word and for the benefits of the kingdom. Now, Lord, everything that we need, we thank you that you're adding it to our lives right now. Everything that we need, we thank you that there's a deposit being made from the heavenlies into our account. God, we thank you that everything that we need is being added to our health, to our bodies, to our mind, to our lives right now. In the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you that you're the God of our tomorrow. We thank you, God, for going before us and making every crooked place straight. And for this, God, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.